What time is it? Oh, no, it's not tippy time. It is San Diego Comic Con preview night Eve. I made it up just now. It's going to be a thing. Stay tuned. But there's so much excitement in the air. Can you smell it? It's a big happening, and I cannot wait. I feel like Tiny Tim looking for Ebenezer Scrooge to come through with some amazing, wonderful gifts. It's almost here, and I have decided I'm going to use my productive time counting down to preview night, coming up with a ridiculous, spectacular list of the companies cannot possibly match up to accomplish what I would consider to be the perfect San Diego Comic-Con for me. What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles, welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files. I'm sure the company reps are en route, getting together their super glue, the duct tape, making sure those prototypes make it through a weekend full of flash photography. Pause for five seconds for dramatic pose. But I want to see what we're getting here. There's so many things. I've come up with a list, probably ridiculous in terms of what would make for the ideal Comic Con for me. A few years back, Mattel's WWE brand had what I think was their most phenomenal. No AJ Styles. It was just a great showing. They had Hulk Hogan figures. They had Sting figures. They had Razor Ramon. And it was just like, this is the best one they've ever done. I want to have that feeling again. I feel like a lot of times with Comic Cons as of late, it's like, oh, it's pretty good. Solid showings from all these brands. But what would it take for me to go, oh my gosh, that 2024 Comic Con? That's the gold standard in terms of this brand, this line I collect. Oh, yeah, that one too. So I decided to break it down, come up with a list of things that I would love to see that would have me going. This was the ideal one, hands down, best Comic Con. So, Let's start with the line that I collect kind of sparingly in the in a whole year. I may maybe collect four figures, maybe three, sometimes two. But when I get them in hand, it's like, man, this is the version. I don't need another one. You guys have knocked it out. Of course, I'm talking about Storm Collectibles. And this year, I don't want to see every character from Street Fighter. A DJ would be nice. Hello. But I have three figures. I really, really, really want to see. They've already teased them. They said, hey, we've got this line. And normally when they announce a new line, I'm like, gosh, will you just finish Mortal Kombat? You know, who knows? You guys might lose it. But this one, I feel very confident they will actually be able to get all the characters that I really want. And that one is Final Fight. And it's just three that I want to see. And you probably know I'm talking about Cody. He's sitting down on the avenue, Mike Hagar and Guy. That's all I need to see. I feel like they've got the attention span to knock out three figures. And of course, Hagar should be Zangief, build, height. I mean, they've already kind of got a mold for him in place. Guy needs to be a little bit smaller than Cody, who can be that average size, bulky, muscular dude. I just want to see those three. I think they can make that happen. They've teased. They've got the license. Or I don't know if it's with so much a tease as they said, hey, we've got a final fight. And those are the three. We can get other characters. We can get Rolento. We can get Poison. But if I can get those three, have them standing next to my Street Fighter characters, I will be happy. I feel like that's a pretty doable choice for Storm Collectibles. Let's see how the other companies fare. I mentioned them earlier, but this is kind of one where I'm really excited to see what they deliver. Mattel's WWE line pretty much comes through every time. And it might be, oh, man, I can't believe they got this legend sign. Or, oh, this is a really cool modern figure. I may actually buy and get this one. Since WrestleMania, or the builds WrestleMania, I've been watching a lot more of the current products. So when they show off all the current stars, I won't be, meh, get to the legends already. I'll, I'll actually probably be interested especially if they start doing costumes, the specific looks from WrestleMania, because I would love to have everyone involved in that show on the shelf, the modern shelf, going like, hey, this is where everybody was for one of the best WrestleManias that I can recall. But, of course, I'm going to go with Legends, because what are we talking about here? For me, they've done some amazing figures. We're getting Big Bubba. I missed him. Today I went to Target, and... They had Hulk Hogan, Real American Hero video playing. I think they had Jamal. 
or Rosie. It was one of the two. They didn't have both of them. No Big Bubba Rogers. So I don't know if that means the case with the other two was gone because it felt like the other two, the Hogan, Jamal, or Rosie were fully stocked all the way to the back of the wall. So maybe they're still trying to find that other box with the rest of Legends 23, I think we're on now. Anyway, I definitely want to see these guys and I would be ecstatic if we see them because it would add more to my NWA ranks and they've done pretty good in terms of just having those figures because of the crossover with most of the big NWA stars going over to WWF. And one of these guys did. He was actually one of the few world champions that we don't have. Spoiler. And the other did not ever go, but he's too big a player in the NWA. We've got so many of the great U.S. heavyweight champions that we also need this guy. And of course, I am talking about the Russians, the Koloss, Nikita, Shatoa, Todd, Tony, Ivan Koloff. I would love for them to do, you know, these guys in part of a Legends wave and make Nikita the chase. That way he can have his black attire. We can have Uncle Live in there chilling. He can be in the red. It doesn't matter. But I mean, I said the Koloffs, the two of them, but I really, of course, want all three with Crusher Khrushchev. Now that would require Demolition getting back signed under the WWE Legends license. Barry Darso has been tweeting on social media, kind of suggesting that maybe he's more open to working with them now that Vince is gone. Yay, yet another reason to be excited about that. If we do get Demolition back, I'm sure for, for Mattel, for Steve, for Bill, Demolition's a priority. But I would absolutely love to see Smash, Barry Darso as Crusher Khrushchev. These three were just monsters in the NWA. And it was Crusher and Ivan who were the first U.S. tag team champions. Love to see those guys having their belts alongside Nikita with the U.S. title. That would be such a dream for me to see those guys represented in all of their evil Russian glory, despite none of them being evil Russians in reality. And the third and the third, the other figure that I would love to see, I feel like this is another pretty realistic one much like the Storm Collectibles Final Fight characters. We've gotten Michael P.S. Hayes. We've got Terry Bam Bam Gordy. So hopefully we will see the third and final of the original three Freebirds, Buddy Roberts in all his glory. I would love to see Mattel do what they've done with other characters. Maybe give him this long shaggy mane that he's got here and more of that closed cropped head sculpt, hair sculpt that we saw the Jacks did for some odd, bizarre reason. That would be really cool because they can do the swappable hair pieces or just separate head sculpts. Really great. And I'd love to see Buddy with both head sculpts or hairstyles. So Storm Collectibles, I want to see Final Fight. For WWE, I'm all about the legends. I want to see all three of the Russians, Nikita, Ivan, Crusher, and Freebird Buddy Roberts. I am sure I'm positive. They're going to have a lot more to show that I'll be excited about. Like, yes, they got this figure, but those are the four that I would be most ecstatic and thrilled to see. And of course, all of this goes out the window. If Mattel and WWE can sign sting ow, and we can get tons of sting figures coming up. That's ideal. Of course. I don't know how long this AEW thing is going. If you'd be comfortable working with Triple H, just so we can get some more WWE Mattel figures in his life in his likeness, that would be great. But I'm going to be slightly more realistic on that end. Let's keep it moving. Going on to Star Wars, specifically the Black Series, because you know I love all the vintage collection stuff they show, and it kind of makes me feel like if I had a mansion, I would dedicate a whole room to the vintage collection where I could set up and buy all these vehicles, all these cool play sets. But since space is kind of coming to a, a battleground now, I had to think a little bit closer. And there are lots of Star Wars characters, and I feel like Mattel, Hasbro's Star Wars team is slowly starting to come around to the idea of, hey, we can make more pretty cool characters. This, these two figures I want to see, and I, I sure have a lot more. I, love, I would love to see a Bespin, Luke Skywalker, Highly articulated. Maybe they could do like the Hot Toys version. I was seeing if he was in view. 
and they could do like a battle damage one where he's in the middle of that fight with Vader and you have the detachable hand and the clean fight just started loot. That would be really cool. Make it a two pack, maybe release one as a chase for them. Either way, a Bespin loot would be awesome, but I want to focus more on the Clone Wars because I really dig that era. So I want to see a Lumin Luminera embarrass Alfie. And the one on the left, the Jedi Master, the one on the right, Barris is her Padawan. And they are, you know, kind of background Jedi in the show, in the show, in the movies. But in Clone Wars, they take on such a higher level of importance, especially Barris. So love to see them. Here's Luminera. Here's Barris. Barris has a key story arc. And I don't want to spoil it if you've never watched Clone Wars. I highly recommend watching it, though. It's amazing. It's awesome. And Barris has a very key role. And she's one of the few people who has a deep, close friendship in this thing where she and Ahsoka are super tight. And you see we got Anakin and Ahsoka. I'd love to get Luminera and Barris so I can have all four of them chilling like that really fun series of episodes. Maybe we could have a little worm as an attachment and as an accessory for Barris, but fun, cool opportunities. And I'm trying to keep my expectations, my hope, my wish list for the Black Series kind of low. If I can get those two, that would add more to my Jedi ranks. They've done really great work with the prequel characters. We've got destroyer droids. We've got droidicos. We've got super battle droids. We've even got a clone versus battle droid two-pack. So all the army building I could possibly want to do, and I haven't done any of it yet, but there are options. They're out there. We've got a three-pack. Maul, Qui-Gon, Padawan, Obi-Wan, they're rolling, doing all kinds of stuff. So it's pretty cool. It's really exciting. If I can just get two more Jedi, I'll be really happy. So that's it. Really, really low bar for the Black Series team to accomplish. I almost feel like they could do it. Next up, going to McFarland Toys, the DC Multiverse line. I feel like Todd has done a really good job of going, let me tackle this corner of the DCU. Let me do this. Let me do that. And He's done such a great job, especially this year, where I'm not so much, dude, what are you doing this arc for? Nobody cares. I'm like, whatever. I'll just wait my time. Eventually, it'll circle back to something I care about. Now, one of the few remaining figures that we know from the leak list has been perfect. The Shiny Knight. And Shiny Knight is a really, really cool character. Sir Justin, he's got the, the gold armor, a little bit of red accents. But he was really big during World War II, during that period for DC Comics. And he was part of the All-Star Squadron. And that is a team of heroes that I feel never get their due. When it comes to action figure treatment, DC Direct did everything, it felt. And it didn't touch them basically at all. I mean, there were a few stragglers, of course. You had their, your JSA crossover heroes, but it was not a lot, if any, dedicated all-star squadron characters so of course i think mcfarland is a guy who's like whatever this looks cool i'll make a figure i've got two and again i don't want to go too wild and too crazy but i would love to see these two done by mcfarland hopefully as comic accurate as possible because they've got really cool costumes first up amazing man this guy has such a cool costume. He's got the green. He's got the yellow. And just to make sure you're not confusing him with somebody else, he's got the big A right there. Jerry Ordway was drawing All-Star Squadron at this point. Started off as a villain, kind of like Falcon. And then he became a hero, a strong foundational piece for the All-Star Squadron. And he's got basically, basically absorbing man's powers. He touches something. He, he gets that, that, uh, he gets that property, the ability, touches a brick wall, comes brick, excuse me, steel, same thing, copper, whatever. He's an Olympic athlete, which would be kind of cool if you would, if McFarland were to announce and reveal an Olympic athlete, just as the Olympics are underway starting Friday. I'll be glued to my TV on that as well. But I think he would make for a really fun figure. And maybe if Todd's feeling kind of fun, he'd add in some attachments to show off his absorbing powers as well. The next one, continuing on with that theme, another one of his teammates, Firebrand. Todd has been kind of odd with his female characters. It feels like 
there's some obvious ones that he should be doing that he hasn't done yet. I feel like Firebrand has a very fun costume and a pretty simple, easy one to do that doesn't require a lot of extra sculpting. Yeah, the head sculpt, maybe that fly collar she's got, but I think he could really do Firebrand off of mostly existing parts and she could, you know, just utilize some already existing flame parts, accessories. She'd be a really easy one for him to knock out. But I love this color scheme, the pink and the red and her orange, but it's supposed to be red hair. I think that would make for a really stunning kind of like, oh, who's this figure on your display with so many reds, blacks, blues? She would really stand out. And pairing her with Shiny Knight, who was interested in her in the comic book, and an amazing man would make for a really fun mini all star squadron display. And if he did knock out two, and I'm not limited to those two, but it wouldn't take a lot to actually finish up the main team. There's Johnny Quick, there's Liberty Bell, Tarantula, Robot Man, and then a slew of Justice Society characters. So if he were to do them, he'd be on a roll, and I would have finally. In my collection, my DC collection, All-Star Squadron figures. So hopefully Ty can make that happen. I'm really curious to see what he does because there's no predicting what he's going to release in terms of figures. So sky is really the limit. Shout out 112 and big. Now, we're moving on to Marvel Legends and I have my pictures all set, but there is no way I can roll out my list. And again, I try to keep this small somewhat realistic so i can be wild and amazed i didn't include any secret wars characters rectangular said a secret wars lineup is coming maybe a wave or two and i'm like all right y'all all know my feelings on that we need new molds for the wrecking crew we need a new absorbing man we should see titania we should see volcana and hopefully a massively improved molecule man that's actually shorter has a crazy face not his maxim model Shoot, that was ridiculous. Anyway, but there's one character that desperately needs one, and he's from the same wave as another character that I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. But Yellow Jacket, this this guy is desperately in need of a new version at this point. So you can't even get him focus. He's so terrible. Anyway, he's got these janky joints that are just so hard to move and pose and he's just ugh, he's a frustrating figure to try to work with and he's getting shamed anytime i pose him with other figures you know, i got the new warbird and of course i'm like dude you look terrible next to her he looks terrible next to cap he's just really overdue and i know we've had so many really great ant-man slash giant man figures we've got the massive Haslab giant man coming later on this year we need a yellow jacket. That's one of his cooler outfits. Really stands out. They could probably still use these wings. They don't need to be changed. They're the perfect, you know, size. They're the perfect kind of flexibility. The plastic they use is great. No need to change anything else except for the whole body. But these you can keep. These are solid. Next up, my Marvel Legends must have for a perfect SDCC. You know this one. It's Banshee. Complete my all new, all different X Men. We've got Thunderbird. We've got Sunfire. They weren't even around for longer than a cup of coffee. Banshee was there for a long time. It's part of the original crew, and he doesn't need any work. They've got a great Banshee figure already. Just repaint it green and yellow. We're good. We're set. Nothing else needs to be done. So hopefully, we can finally see Banshee and I can write him off of my list and stop just making you guys so frustrated. Always making sure to say Banshee anytime there's a Marvel Legends wish list opportunity. Next up is a character who, much like Yellow Jacket, has even more reason to get a new figure because of this new Warbird figure. Back then she was Miss Marvel. But I mean, we've gotten so many different versions of this guy and you know, we were in a Captain America kind of theme year, even though Captain America Brave New World got pushed back to next year. I still think there's a reason to get this figure out. Maybe because of the spotlight, the attention on this new Captain America, we could go back to not quite where it started from, but one of his classic looks. I'm talking about Falcon with Red Wing. 
we got to get this. We got to get this look. This is such a classic one. Falcon has so many different outfits with some variation of the red and white theme. This is the iconic look. We got a Toy Biz version of this. And it feels like the Hasbro Marvel Legends team is like, all right, how many more on this list of Toy Biz figures that we haven't done do we need to do? This is one that needs to get done. Hopefully we will see him this weekend or Friday. I think that's when the Marvel Legends panel is. So looking forward to seeing him knocked out. And speaking of knocked out characters and figures, I definitely want to see the Frightful Four fooled you. I know you were thinking I was going to say the Marauders, but we're really close to having this team complete. Sure. We could stand for a whole box set to give us a Medusa that will not topple over thanks to the weight of her hair. We have a Sandman. I don't really need to get a better one of him because the last one was really solid. So really, I'm saying I just need a two-pack. Give me the Wizard. Give me Pace Pot Pete slash the Trapster. I will be happy. I mean, I think this is certainly a possible easy set to do. Just make it a two-pack. They've done some really great work with two-packs lately. And if you want to get funny, if you want to mix it up, do something cool, let's give Medusa this outfit, too. I mean, they were rocking a really hard purple theme here. And this is a really cool look for her. She's mysterious. Cat Wizard. We got the Trapster. Pace Pop Pete. We got Salmon. Salmon does start rocking some purple shirts with this, so he's not wearing the green all the time. I would love that if they were to do a box set. They've already got a good Sandman, so they could just use that one and repaint it. But the Frightful Four, I mean, the Fantastic Four major team in the Marvel Universe. And this would be a really good opportunity to take advantage of, hey, next year's a Fantastic Four movie year. Frightful Four in a box set. Let's make it happen. So that's it. Really simple Marvel Legends wish list. I want to see an updated Yellow Jacket. He's so long overdue. Banshee repainted. You don't have to do anything else, but just take all that blue from the X-Men 3 pack, paint it green. I will be happy as long as the green's a good shade and not some bogus thing where we're still seeing the blue underneath. I will be happy. And then Frightful 4. Box set or just the wizard and Trapster. Pete, Pace Pot Pete. Either way, let's make that happen. Home stretch now. Jojo Classified Series. This, this line, I feel like the team understands me. They're making these figures exactly for me and maybe everyone else. But I don't really feel like I've got to go. It won't be perfect if they don't do this because they're knocking out so many figures I want. Really, with G.I. Joe, they're going to have to get to like 1991 before I start going, eh, let's not rush to get this figure out. There's so many other great ones, but really, they can just roll the wheel, roll the dice, Put, you know, just throw the, the dart, the dart on the board, stick it. Hey, look, it's on this character. And I will be happy with the classified series version of it. But I'm going to be particular and focused on something I really want to see. It is my guy. We've got most of them done now. But my 1985 collection is looking kind of weird because looking at the squad leader and going, yeah, he needs a better figure. So for sure, retro Flint. With all this cool costume, the shotgun shells on the side, no protection needed, a green shotgun, those cool belts hanging slightly askew, really solid camouflage pants because the original Flint was kind of dicey on that end. Gloves that are just so short, a better head sculpt, maybe McCocky Grant. I wouldn't be upset if he gets two head sculpts. What up, Hasbro, on that one? So, yeah, Flint is for sure. My guy, I want to see him get a new figure, and that would be awesome. And continuing with that theme in 1985, I'm going to get this guy. Snake Eyes, yeah, we've gotten some different versions of him, but I want this full-on Ninja Commando look. And I've already got a great Timber. Do not need him. There is no need to release Timber. But just Snake Eyes with this really cool, colorful outfit with, this, with the clash of the silver slash gray, the straps there, gray silver and he's one i think if they release this in cartoon colors i would buy it again too so there's an easy two purchases coming at least for me if this figure gets released in that look so yes let's make that version a reality and then 
I know we're going to see the, the Cobra HasLab. So it's going to be some amazing vehicle. Most likely the Rattler, hopefully. And, um, but I don't need another Joe vehicle. And it has been ridiculously hot here, which makes me hope, probably again, so that we're going to see a lot of snow come December, January, February. And if so, I really, really, really want to roll this bad boy out. You know what I'm talking about. The Snowcat Hasbro Classified Series team, make this a reality for me, please, so I can go outside, have my neighbors going, what is this dude doing? Don't mind me. I've just got my snow cat, my snow job, my snow serpents. We're having a ball. So that's what I would love to see. To me, those would make for a perfect San Diego Comic-Con showing. Of course, I won't be upset seeing more things. But what would it take for all your respective companies to have a perfect Comic-Con for you? Let me know in the comments what you want to see. And yeah, just a few more short hours. We will be reporting on all this fun stuff and getting hype, getting our pre-orders ready and going, oh man, it's the most wonderful time of the year to be an action figure collector. For now, this is Jeffrey Lyles. This episode of Lyles Figure Files has been filed. Mm -hmm.